Welcome guys, this is a uh, Melksham Traction Motor Depot. Now, that name may change as the railway is built, however for now I'm sticking to that. Um, normally you'll find me recording on the Dugmer Junction, which is Shannon Man 2's railway. Um, the boards for the railway are going to be going up within the next couple of weeks. It has been delayed, I was hoping they were going to be up by now. So, I have literally just put the track down to give myself an idea of what I want. By the way, when you've seen the Kenilworth Castle going around just a moment ago, typically, when it went past the camera, went up the top end of the straight, it just stopped working. Um, I can hear the motor trying to work, it's just spinning and spinning and spinning, but the wheels are going, not going around. If I disconnect the coaches, he will go around, but as soon as I put the coaches on, he doesn't want to know, he just spins in the same place. So maybe there's a cog inside or something which isn't connecting properly, I don't know. Um, just to sum it up really, I've had a lot of bad luck trying to get this railway up up and going. Um, where do I start? Uh, I brought a Hornby Select uh, as part of a Cornishman set with the Kenilworth Castle. The Hornby Select didn't work. Faulty. Sent it back to Hornby, they were brilliant, good as gold, they fixed it. And um, sent it back to me and it worked. Um, I then bought the mixed freight traffic set as well where you got the Ginty and the little 08 with a couple of wagons and an oil tanker um, yeah so I sold that handset which was in there then I brought an NC sorry NEC power cab uh, the NEC power cab I brought off someone on eBay uh, oh, I won't mention his name but I won't be dealing with him again let's put it that way it was listed as in pristine condition, it come, it had sellotape marks all over it, it didn't work properly, um, didn't even supply me the correct plug for it. Um, I know they do come sometimes with the American ones, I understand that, but even when I got all the correct wiring up together and procedures for it, it still didn't work. It lit up and just didn't work, so again another faulty item. Um, I sold, typically, I sold the other select which did work because the NEC was coming. So I was left with no controllers. Um, so yeah, I was, I was a bit stuck. So what I did, I sent the uh, NEC back. Um, after about two weeks of eBay disputes, I finally got my money back. And um, Five Elms, uh, the, I seen one of his videos where he had the Hornby E-Link um, and I instantly thought, right, I'm gonna go with that. Uh, the Hornby E-Link uh, is probably due down to droppers in the track, which uh, Five Elms has advised me of, so thanks Jason. But um, I have been having a few power shortages, but hopefully that will be resolved once I've got it on boards and I can put some droppers in. Um, what other bad luck have I had? Um, yeah, Hornby E-Link, going back to that. I purchased one off eBay, I like eBay. Purchased one off eBay and the first one didn't work just faulty, didn't work at all, sent it back to the seller, uh, he sent me a replacement, the replacement come faulty, didn't work, um, so then I sent that one off, I thought well I'm not going to send it back to the seller, so I sent it back directly to Hornby, Hornby fixed the e-link, sent it back, well I think they just sent me a new one to be fair, um, and I've got it working finally, seems like forever. Um, this seems like a, a broken record really, I've just had so much so much go wrong, it's unreal. Uh, I brought myself a, a Rail Scenix wheel cleaner, took it out of the box, guess what, it was broken, the the wire connecting to the little metal bit of track inside which makes obviously the wheels go around was disconnected, the solder we had wasn't strong enough to hold it on, so that was a bit of a nightmare but we've got it working again now. Um, Sound chips, you've probably seen the locos I've been putting on my channel uh, for the class 50 and the class 37. Uh, the, the class 50 and 37 one cost me just over 200 quid uh, combined with the postage. Um, the class 50 one come, didn't work, the sound was all distort, it didn't come out unless I put my finger gently onto the speaker. Uh, sent it back, got a replacement sent out within about three days of an hour. hour in total with about an hour of actually running it the sound chip blew well not the chip but the actual speaker blew or something was wrong with it so that had to be sent back to get a replacement um, got the replacement back and it's gone again 
and then sent it back and guess what it went again so my class 50 with the sound currently doesn't well it has sound but the, the speaker is blown on it at the moment so I don't know if it's me doing something wrong or they're just not very good speakers within the uh, which are attached to the chips but that's another little issue I've got to sort out now um, class 37 when that sound chip when that first come didn't work at all sent it back apparently it had um, corrupt CVs on it sent me another one replacement that works perfectly fine so I'm happy with that no problems at all as you can see it's going around now um, but yeah I'm just not very happy I've got the, the class 50 which needs to have a new speaker fitted rather than sending it back I think I'm just going to buy another speaker and try and do it myself because I would imagine that the person I bought the chips off is probably getting a bit fed up with me sending it back even though it's not my fault if it doesn't work it doesn't work but there you go um, Kenilworth Castle um, the the chip when I was trying out the Hornby E-Link for the first time I was trying to program the, the chip in Kenilworth Castle um, and I just was having no luck whatsoever but when I was using the Kenilworth Castle on the Hornby Select it was running around perfectly fine no problems at all when I got the E-Link back which finally worked the Kenilworth Castle went about a hundred yards I spent on a tra on the length of track and then just slowed and slowed and slowed made a bit of a noise and this went just stopped so I had to send that back to Hornby. They fixed it, it came back yesterday. It's been running around for about an hour now and then just as I turn the camera on, it goes past the camera and just goes again. So as you can probably tell guys, it is a broken record. I've had so much bad luck, it's unreal. Um, I don't think that's even all of it. Um, as you can see that Backman building which is over there, I brought that off eBay. I should really stop buying stuff off eBay. As you can probably see, the decals in the window, they haven't, they're not in there. Um, the, the roof on the top, those of you who are familiar with the Batman double row depots, um, the roof should be stuck down, but it's not, it's loose. I will get up and show you, I'll, I'll do that on another video, but I can literally lift it up and down. It's broken, it's not, not very good. Um, so yeah, I've just had lots and lots of bad luck really. But I'm hoping, I'm going to start seeing some light at the end of the tunnel if I can just get this bloody Kenilworth Castle work and then get another another speaker for the 50. Um, but yeah, that's about it really. Um, I'm not going to blabber on much more. Sorry guys, I'm probably just waffling on here, but it's just I've been such a frustrating time over the last couple of months since I've been in this flat. I wanted to get in the flat, get the boards up, get a railway going, something to keep me entertained in the evening, just keep me occupied. Uh, and get me off the Xbox really because I spend far too much time on the Xbox I just wanted a, another hobby just to take my mind off things but um, yeah it's, it's not really going my way at the moment spent an awful lot of money I feel on on you know on this railway at the moment it doesn't look like a lot but I probably spent a good five six hundred pounds on it already with all the track the sound chips the locomotives um, bit, bits you can't see the buildings ballast I brought for it points um, stuff to control the railway like the e-links for example with hornby selects necs all right yes i've got some of the money back but it still has to go back out again to you know get replacements um another thing which went wrong with the hornby e-link completely my fault though uh, i registered the hornby e-link and then my computer decided to go kapuff um so i had to do a system reboot on my computer couldn't access my desktop then when i reloaded windows onto it and reloaded hornby um, Railmaster, I couldn't re-register the product key um, that's currently in process, Hornby said they're going to reset it for me so I'm just waiting for an email back now just to get that done and then hopefully I can have more than two locos running around um, I'll give you some sort of idea, I'll pick up the camera now to show you what the plan is um, hopefully it's to give you some sort of idea if any of you guys have any feedback, any suggestions on anything I've mentioned or advice it's all welcome i'm new to this doing it on my own um, it's muchly appreciated um, anything you think i could do with the layout as well because it is a bit of an odd shaped room as you will see and you're gonna have to excuse the mess so let's have a quick look and we'll see i'll show you what i've got to work with oh. so i'll start as you come in oh. so as you can see it's, it's, a, it's a spare room it's uh, on the floor at the moment it's a bit of an odd shaped room. Come around, you've got the corner piece here. 
and it goes all the way into a corner right down there. So it's more of, it's kind of like a, well if I show you the track, it's kind of like a, a pear shape really, the, the way the track's going to run around. That's all I can really do. I, I was originally going to have a terminus running down to this corner here, just behind the block there. And then the terminus just coming up to here and have it going backwards and forward, backwards and forward. But my, my dad mentioned that maybe I could have a, a you know, a, a line going across here, just with a push up and pull out board. So every time I want to go in and out, I can just lift it up and take it out. So I've got a, a good run around. So basically here, as, sorry, taking off focus. So basically here, it's just going to be something, some sort of bridge, which I'm going to, try and create just so it looks like it's just a bridge going across on, on the piece of wood. Um, it really obviously is just going to run around and then we're going to have ourselves the TDM. So it's only going to be a small TDM. Don't ignore the coaches, that's not where they're going to live. It is just purely going to be for traction motors only. Um, and that's more or less how it's going to look. Ignore the 50, the 08, the Ginty, and the other 50 which hasn't got the body shell on, those pieces of track will not be there. It's actually just going to be the three lanes where I can fit six, five or six locos, and then the two lines up here where I can fit one more and then have a free lane for movement. Um, I've got a connection there just so I can change and switch over lanes. And uh, yeah, it's just going to come all the way around, all the way up to the top. The original plan was to have it go off up into the corner of the traction motor depot up there. Um, however, I did feel that that might be difficult for filming, so I've decided to have it close to me so it's easier for recording. Um, sorry about the mess, guys. This is going to be a bit difficult to get around. It's just going to then follow around. You have to ignore my curves as well. I'm not very professional, but with the limited space I've got, it's a bit hard to get them straight and accurate. Um, I'm going to try and get down here. This ain't going to come around here. Um, and this is where the station's going to be. There's going to be a short station, probably big enough to ho hopefully for about four, maybe five coaches to go on. And it's just literally just going to run down the length of this side of the room and then back around onto the bridge again. Uh, you can see that there's two pieces of track here at the moment. However, the furthest one away, there will be a set of points coming off there. So, yeah, um, there will be some points coming off here which will basically follow around. So it'll come off, go down the back. There will, like I said, be a station. So it'll go around the back of the station and it will literally go right down to the end and connect up just before it turns off to go onto the, the bridge, which I'm gonna have. Um, it's gonna be something like an avoiding line or a, I don't know, like a, a resting line for any freight traffic. So it's something like they have at Westbury train station or um, something similar to what Glebro Junction had on his where he had like an abandoned line which was used only for freight um, which will be you know a bit derelict looking um, so that that's the plan uh, if I like I said if any of you guys have any ideas of what I could do in this small space let me know I, I'm always willing to listen to suggestions but yeah um, I'll quickly show you that roof as it as I'm stood right here actually if I show you what I mean let I can just get my hand down on it it comes straight off. It's, it's absolutely knackered. So a bit of glue might fix it, but I wasn't very happy about that. To be fair, I think I paid a hundred and I think it was about one hundred and thirty pound, including postage for the double double road depot and also the single road depot. Um, I was struggling to find them on eBay at the point that I wanted them, but there's you know they they always do pop up, but I was struggling to find find them. I was trying to save on postage, but Nothing wrong with the single, but the double I'm not very happy with, basically. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to waffle on much more, guys. But like I said, just comment, subscribe, and if you have any anything you would like to see, any feedback, let me know, all right?